So we've allowed the goats to escape. Because in this case, the grass is greener on the other side. So as you can see, there is a line just so far outside of the pasture's fencing because they've been sticking their necks through, trying to reach the grass on this side. So, instead of mowing and uh, picking them grass and leaves constantly, we decided to just let them over here so they can eat the grass down. Isn't that delicious? Most grass you guys have seen in months. So today I am heading back out into the garden and we are going to start planting our fall crops. But first things first, thanks to those blister beetles, I have to replant my eggplant seeds again. This is going to be the third time, but this time I thought of a little trick to hopefully prevent them from eating my sprouts. Well. One eggplant sprout survived, but it is eaten up quite a bit. So my plan was to get some extra screen we had on hand and go to the dollar store and get some rubber bands to uh, keep on top of our buckets. So now until they reach this height, and they got about, I don't know, six inches or so, um, at least they'll survive. So we're gonna replant in these buckets, get our eggplant going, and uh, hopefully, this is gonna be an iffy crop because eggplant is 85 days to harvest. So thankfully we have a longer growing season here because it's ridiculously hot for a ridiculous amount of time. It says 85 days to harvest, so we'll see. We'll see if we get any eggplant this year. So it's August now and August is the month that you're gonna to wanna to start your lettuces your beets, your Swiss chard, your kohlrabi. Um, I've got this mesclun mix here. I did this last year, it's pretty neat, it's super colorful. Got a bunch of different uh, salad mixes in there. And I've also got my romaine and uh, my spinach. So let's get to planting. Cucumbers are still going strong, but the wildflowers are completely dead. So Lewis is gonna clean out this spot for me and uh, we're gonna prep the soil and utilize this space for some new crops. This is where the pumpkin plant was. I'm gonna utilize this space as well. And also going to use in between all of our squash plants. Probably gonna clean up the weeds and I'm thinking maybe do beets in between. Got lots of space in this bed too. How's our newest tomato plants? Did they survive? They're alive, but they're not doing so well. This tomato plant is growing 
in its own direction. Oh wow, he's seen better days. Some of them are looking good though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven are doing good. Three of them are pretty puny though. We've also got this bucket here and uh, this bucket here we can tidy up and plant in. So I planted my eggplant seeds. Lewis is covering all the buckets with the screen right now and then they'll be set. And hopefully we don't lose them again. Hold that side. I'm sorry? Hold that side. Yeah. And if this don't work, I quit. Look at the sweet potato bed. It exploded. Oh, I can't wait to see if these actually did anything. How many days until harvest for those? Um, I think I remember watching Doug and Stacy. I think they harvest them like September, October. I could be wrong though. I'll have to go back to one of their videos and check it out. Try me now, blister beetles. Mwahaha. Yeah. Look at this okra. It's freaking huge. That is the biggest one we've gotten yet. Any more? None? I see some new sprouts. And there's one right there. Cucumbers are doing awesome. And they look beautiful. How beautiful that looks climbing the trellis like that. I think the blister beetle fetish is finally over. Good, they can go back to hell where they came from. Got a cube right there. Got another one right here. I love this variety. It is so neat. I thought these were gonna die. With all that rain we got, look at this plant. They literally, the whole entire plant looked like this. Like it was just gonna crap the bed. But thank God for all that rain because it revived them. And this side right here, I mean, you could literally see through that whole wall. Now you can't. They look beautiful. Look at all these buds. They're, they're ready to throw some cubes everywhere. Mm, lots of new flowers. Literally. Hey, buddy. My, what long legs you have. There's another cute. <laughs> there we go. Looking good. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Where'd all my flowers go? Where'd all our tomatoes go? Blister beetles ate them. No. Good Dang grief. Look at this. So upset about this. Wow. And this is why we feed hornworms to our chickens. Rotten buggers. Speaking of. Oh, look at you. I'll be taking my tomatoes now, thank you. Can you take him off? I just cracked the whole thing off. This plant is doing terrible. They're all doing terrible now. It's been nice knowing you. Now your chicken food. Oh, Raven's gonna enjoy you, Mr. Alien Bug. <laughs> I don't think my hand's as big as yours, babe. <laughs> you got it. Do I though? Do I? Put I your, did! Put your wrist into it, baby. I got it! <laughs> <laughs> oh. So what did you plant in this one again? Cilantro. All cilantro? All cilantro, and that's all... Look uh, at it! Something else. It's so big! Look at them go. But I think we need to replant whatever was in here because I don't see anything. Yeah, that was uh, 
I keep wanting to say basil, but it's not basil. Oh, wait. It's, uh, it's dill. Dill, yeah. It did sprout. Yeah, certain spots. Oh, better than nothing. So a couple of years ago, I invested in a sun oven. I was lucky enough to find it on Facebook, used, but in excellent condition. I spoke last year to my husband about how much I wanted a second one to feed our large family, and I was lucky enough to win Doug and Stacy's sun oven contest. So now we have two sun ovens. I'm currently preheating them. I'm gonna show you guys how to make dinner in the sun oven using no electricity. So today we are prepping cheesy taco casserole. And we're gonna put them into casserole dishes and we're going to stick them in the sun ovens. Now our family does not eat meat, so we are using a meatless crumble, but you're welcome to use ground beef, ground turkey, whatever you prefer. So here's all the ingredients. And while we get these whipped together, we're gonna to head outside and check on the sun ovens and see what temperatures they've preheated to. Sun oven number one is a little over 300. Oh, sun oven number two is at 350.
Both casseroles are in the sun ovens and what you just saw me and Lewis do was adjust the sun ovens to match back up with the sun. So when I first put them out here earlier today, um, the sun was in a different direction. It has since moved. So when you cook with the sun, you need to literally cook with the sun. So if you're cooking something long, a couple of hours, you're gonna wanna come out every 20 minutes, adjust the sun ovens according to the direction of the sun. Um, in our case, we just adjusted it to match back up with the sun and we should be fine. We shouldn't have to um, adjust the sun ovens anymore because this is only a 20 minute recipe. So we should be good, but I'm gonna show you guys what's on the back of the sun ovens that allows the sun oven to be raised up um, and angle it and you can also put the bar down if you need it completely flat on the ground. It really is very versatile and it makes it so easy to chase the sun while you're cooking. So in the backs of both sun ovens, they have this bar with uh, pegs. It snaps into place. It allows you to not only adjust the sun oven uh, side by side, you know, you move the sun oven yourself. This allows the sun oven to be propped all the way up and uh, put all the way flat back onto the ground depending on the sun's position. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. And as you can see, the cheese is, is all pretty melted. Sitting at about 300 degrees in both sun ovens. And the great thing about sun ovens is that you can't burn your food. They act more like a slow cooker in the sense where you can leave it all day and it's not gonna cause any harm. So we're gonna let these cook for probably another 10 minutes and then put the other two in.